those of you just joining us, welcome to the Radical Exchange Annual Conference. Our next session will be insights into Git Exchange. Enjoy. Hey everyone, and welcome back on stage to the annual Radical Exchange Conference. Uh, please note that this is a pre-recorded session. So in case you are in our virtual conference environment and you would ask questions on Slido, we won't be able to answer them at the end of the session. So sorry for that. But uh, yeah, the session is about Git Exchange. Uh, we'll give you some insights into what the first uh, Radical Exchange Hackathon looked like. My name is Leon Erickson. I'm an Entrepreneurship and Technology Associate at Radical Exchange Foundation, and I'm joined here by Conal Day, who works at Gitcoin. Gitcoin helped us facilitate this hackathon on their virtual hackathon environment, but it's just one of the activities of Gitcoin, among other things, yeah, like the global flagship project for quadratic finance. So that's super exciting. And the other three gentlemen here have been the winners on the Radical Exchange track of the hackathon. And we will dive into their work uh, soon. But before that, let's just make uh, quick rounds of intro, I'd say. Uh, Connor, do you want to take it away? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you, Leon. Um, so like you said, my name is Connor O'Day. Um, I work on the Gitcoin team. I've been working on Gitcoin for about a year, and I've been at Consensus for uh, almost five years now. Um, long-time believer in, in blockchain and crypto, um, long-time Ethereum uh, trader, miner, um, all that jazz. But um, but yeah, so on Gitcoin, you know, I do business development. I primarily work on our hackathon product. Um, we Gitcoin started out. I'll, I'll tell you guys a bit more uh, later on. But we started out as an open-source bounties platform, and it has kind of blossomed into much more than that. Um, in, in different products and ways to support open source. Um, and so, yeah, so we run a lot of virtual events, um, especially as of late due, due to the kind of you know, pandemic that's, that's happening all over the world. Uh, but I'm really excited to, to talk about our virtual hackathons here and especially the one we did with Radical Exchange because we saw some really cool projects come out of it. And um, yeah, we're excited to share. So thanks for having me. Yeah, and thank, thanks Connor also for all the time and help you gave us like doing this hackathon project. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you. Cool, let me let me hop in and say hi everyone. Uh, John John Clark, super cool to, to be here and chatting to everyone today. Uh, part of a team called Wildcards, implementing some radical exchange ideas like harbinger tax to fund animal conservation. Um, yeah, I'm really passionate about education, building fund systems, learning about the space and yeah, come from a software development background, but really enjoy doing a lot of everything. And yeah, I'm very stoked to be talking through some of the cool stuff that's gone on in this hackathon. It's been, been an awesome time. So thanks everyone for facilitating. Very cool. Thank you. Hey folks, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Russell. I'm a software developer. Uh, I'm based in Toronto. I work at a place called Wrangle. And um, I actually didn't really get here from the blockchain space as much. Um, my background uh, um, came more from the side of working with government. And I recently spent nine months working on um, our homeless shelter software in Toronto. And that really led me down the path of looking at different ways we can fund public goods in the future that's a little bit more um, radical and a little bit more fast-paced. Great to meet you. Hello all, uh, this is Nestor Bonilla, um, also a software developer, and I've been working uh, for the last, last six, six years with nonprofit organization um, developing um, technology for a good. And since last year, uh, where I have the opportunity to join as um, the five as a scholar, I've been into learning into, into blockchain uh, for the Consensus Pascal Academy, for the university, for the university, and continue learning by my own. And uh, I've been very excited to for the proposal that Radical Exchange have, and uh, very excited also to to join. Uh, many hackathons of Gitcoin. Um, excited to be here to share uh, the products that we did. Cool, thank you. So I guess next, uh, Connor, if 
if you could show the audience or guide the audience through the Git Exchange Hackathon portal. Uh, and so doing, I guess we'll see the, the other sponsors that we had and challenges. Yeah, yeah thanks. Ab absolutely. Um, so I guess to, to start off here, so um, if you're not familiar with Gitcoin, um, we are an Ethereum project that's focused on supporting uh, open source developers and getting them paid. Um, so we started out with a open source bounties platform um, that was directly integrated with GitHub. Um, you could open any issue on GitHub, fund it with Ethereum or any other ERC20 token, um, and essentially outsource or, or freelance that work. Uh, but it's, it's blossomed as much more than that. So I'll just show you quickly here first. This is the home page. Uh, we call this the, the town square, and it's almost like a, a social feed um, for you know, open source developers. Um, anybody can post, like, comment, um, you can send people tips. Um, and generally, we're just trying to make this feel you know, like a community where, where you can actually meet people, interact. Um, you, know, you can earn money, but you can also attend workshops, you can learn. And so, so we have a lot going on here. So I recommend you checking it out um, if you haven't yet. Um, and on the topic of, of radical exchange and, um, you know, some of these new mechanisms, um, one thing that we've been experimenting a lot with are, um, uh, is quadratic finance and, and CLR. And so you can see here, we actually run these little mini CLR distributions with, uh, with tips on the platform um, that kind of reset every two weeks. Um, so essentially, if you're earning money through tips, um, you get a match from this matching pool that we put up. Um, so definitely recommend checking that out. Um, I will just do a quick plug as well for Gitcoin grants. So this is kind of our real, our big experiment with, uh, with CLR and quadratic finance. Um, I know there's gonna be some other topics and panels about this, so I won't dive into it too much. Uh, but right now we have uh, grants around six, that's live. It'll still be live when you watch this and it runs till January or uh, June 29th, sorry. Um, but you can, you can donate to any projects in the space that are working on public goods. Um, we also have some smaller categories for uh, community marketing, um, a, big, a big pool for tech, but we're also doing something for uh, Black Lives Matter charities right now. So I highly recommend checking this out, um, donating to, to public goods and projects that interest you, and checking out how much of a, of a match that can actually get using these cool new mechanisms that we all uh, know and love. Maybe let me let me jump in here, Conrad, very quickly, just for the people in the audience that are not like blockchain people or not blockchain people yet uh with the currencies that you see there for example DAI or ethereum are like all blockchain systems blockchain tokens and you need an account on the ethereum blockchain uh to be able to donate to these projects so you have to you will eventually have to buy some cryptocurrency and and yeah donate from there and actually also the prizes and the bounties on the Git Exchange Hackathon uh, correspondingly were all cryptocurrency based. So let's say even if, if the Gitcoin platform would shut down, the, the prizes would still be there and under <laughs> the control of the participants. It's fascinating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I probably should have said that. So yeah, those of you who are kind of new to, to blockchain, um, you know, part of the reason why why we use these virtual currencies is because they're programmable, um, they're they're trustless, where you don't actually have to trust um, uh, us as Gitcoin or any centralized entity to use, um, and you can be you, you can be sure that you know whatever the code says, um, that's the way it will run. Um, and so so yeah, so these Dai Dai is basically a dollar, uh, but it's like a digital dollar that exists in our ecosystem. Um, so I won't dive too much into this, but um, we, do, we do like to experiment with these new radical mechanisms um, at Gitcoin and, and you know, basically try them out in the real world. Because I know a lot of it's still in theory, but um, I think quadratic finance um, is something that can make a huge impact now. And we've seen great results uh, from these past rounds. Um, but so anyway, uh, what we're here to talk about are hackathons. Um, so, uh, at Gitcoin for about a year now, we've been running these virtual hackathons. Um, they typically last somewhere from two to three weeks. Um, you can, uh, I, I guess I can't send you guys this link, but maybe if I'm watching, I can drop it in the chat. Uh, but you can check out all the past hackathons that we've run. Um, some have a bunch of different sponsors in them. Some are exclusive to one sponsor. Uh, but generally the goal is to get people building on your technology, on your product. Um, 
you know, it's, it's, it's almost like a marketing play to get your name out there, to get, get your company out there. Uh, but you can also actually use it to get really useful work done. Um, so if you're trying to, to outsource um, work or, or hire freelancers, um, it's a great way to kind of get your, your uh, you know, toes in the water with, with the blockchain community. And uh, so what I'm going to be talking about today is this hackathon that we just ran um, a couple weeks ago. Um, it was called Git Exchange um, as a combination of Radical Exchange and Gitcoin. And uh, so the goal of this hackathon was to experiment and, and have our community try to build some of these new and interesting um, radical mechanisms that, that we keep talking about. Um, so we had a few different sponsors come on board. Um, Besides radical change in Bitcoin, we had IDENA, Democracy Earth, Ocean Protocol, and Wildcards, uh, who are all companies that are either building on blockchain or in Web3, and they're actively thinking about or experimenting with, uh, you know, quadratic voting, quadratic finance, um, identity, any of these mechanisms that um, radical exchange is, is researching and trying to push forward. Um, so we ran this kind of ahead of, of this virtual conference. Um, uh, one, just as a way to kind of explore new use, use cases and, and get some interesting work done, um, but also to, you know, kind of hype up the conference, um, get some of our winning hackers um, involved, potentially uh, showing off the products they built, um, which we're, we're doing here today. Um, and if you do navigate to this page, um, you can see we hosted a, a live stream with all of the sponsors. Uh, they talked about their, their companies and their platforms. Um, and we also ran many workshops um, kind of throughout this event. And so if you go to our YouTube channel here, you'll see a bunch of workshops with these different sponsors that, um, that are pretty interesting. So I know there's probably tons of content already seen as here at the virtual conference, but uh, these will always be out there. Um, and before I dive into the actual prizes, um, I'll just say, so we, we run many of these events. We have two other ones that are live right now, uh, many more planned for this summer. So if you are um, a developer, an entrepreneur, or just a creative thinker, um, I definitely recommend checking out Gitcoin and checking out the events that we have coming up because um, there's always more, there's always lots of ways to um, actually earn crypto. We have people that make a living this way. Um, but also, you know, it, it's a great way to interact with the community, um, meet other people, attend workshops from uh, kind of the leading companies in, in this space and in Web3. Um, so, so yeah, come, come check us out. Um, but yeah, so with the, the Git Exchange Hackathon, um, like I said, we had these, these five or six sponsors, um, and we had 12 prizes total. Um, we'll be talking about a few of the Radical Exchange and Wildcards prizes um, today, so I won't go through all of those, but um, I guess just to walk through a few of them. So one of the bounties that we put up as Gitcoin was um, not even, not even you know, a, a developer-focused bounty, so you didn't actually need to write any code. Um, it was all about proposing different ideas um, and mechanisms that um, you want to see built or, or some type of idea that you think would, would be helpful in this uh, radical exchange world. Um, so we have not reviewed this entirely yet. Um, we're still kind of judging and going through the submissions, but we saw some really cool proposals um, around things like identity, voting systems, um, you know, supporting open source, um, many of which could, could actually be, you know, integrated into our site eventually or um, ideally make an impact in the real world. So um, this was just asking for like a one page, uh, one page, you know, proposal. Um, and so, you know, if you're out there and you're not actually a developer, um, I do recommend still checking out these hackathons because, um, you know, there's, there's stuff here for economists, for business people. Um, you don't necessarily need to be a blockchain developer to uh, participate. Um, and yeah, and so, so moving on, um, I, so I, I believe we're going to talk about the democracy earth one, correct? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, um, John, John. So, yeah. yeah. And, and we'll talk about the radical exchange ones. Um, I will know what's interesting here is, is, uh, three of these bounties were video production bounties. Um, so again, you know, while Gitcoin is, was started kind of as a place for developers and for open source, uh, open source code and, and work. Um, there's, there's design bounties, there's, you know, video editing, um, business proposals. Um, so there's much, much more to it than just, uh, simply writing code. Um, and I believe we'll talk about wild cards as well. So I won't dive into that. Um, another interesting, uh, uh, project that we had on here was ocean protocol. Um, and so they had 
two bounties, I believe. They actually moved one of their bounties into uh, uh, the next hackathon that we're doing right now called Protecting Privacy. So that's still live if you want to check it out. Uh, but this was um, um, incentivizing users to create a, a mini CLR for Algo Marketplace. Um, and again, CLR is uh, constrained liberal radicalism. Is that, that's correct, right, Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, so that's what we use for grants, where there's a matching pool and donations get matched from this, this uh, fund based off of both how many people donate and the size of the donations um, using this clever algorithm. So, you know, the power is kind of in the, the people's hands and not just the, the wealthiest. Um, so I won't dive into all that, but um, we saw a few really interesting uh, projects here around the ocean protocol token and being able to stake that and having a seal around um, for, for donations with ocean. Um, so that was a really interesting one. And what else? We'll talk about wild cards. Um, last thing I'll, I'll talk about is IDENA. So IDENA actually put up uh, two really big bounties here. So $9,000 total, um, both focused around um, one, their Ethereum relay system and uh, their, their sign-in and identity system. So maybe if, do you mind if I say some words about the Ethereum relay? I think that's, uh, yes, yes, please that's do. A, um, that's a super exciting. Yeah, that's a super exciting one. So Adina is, is uh, it's it's a blockchain for itself that is sort of a, gives people a proof of personhood. So in a certain time period, all the nodes connected to the network have to solve a Turing proof riddle, which is like a riddle that only a human could solve. And this way, all these people who like will only be able to do it once in this time frame. Maybe Einstein will be able to solve it twice. But essentially, if you solved it in that narrow time frame, you, you proved the network that you are human. And in the challenge, the problem now is that IDENA is a very early stage blockchain. So the platform isn't too developed yet and you can't really run like complex or more interesting application on it yet, but like proving your identity and doing like simple payment transactions. And the idea here was to connect it to the Ethereum blockchain. So if I actually don't know what's the status here, if, if like a solution came out of it, but that would actually mean that, for instance, Gitcoin as a team could decide, okay, the new login for Gitcoin is IDNA based or any like democracy contracts that you would build on, on top of Ethereum could use IDNA identities. And I think the fascinating thing then would be that if, if this, takes off, we could have like global, truly trustless democracy without like one watchman who says you have an identity, you don't have one. Um, yeah, running globally. Uh, so I, I, I'm super excited to see like what the hackers came up with here. Yeah, no, totally agree. Um, I believe this challenge was extended um, a few days. So I think it just finished um, yesterday, the day before. So the, the judging yep. has not actually taken place yet, but um, you can see both the projects um, on the site. They're fully open source, and we're really excited to see uh, what the IDENA team decides because it, it looks like these are pretty thorough uh, solutions here. So, yep. um, yeah. And so, you know, without taking too much more of your time, uh, this is just kind of like a first taste of um, some of the bounties in the hackathon. I think in total, um, so we had 12 prizes. I think we had like 30, uh, 44 projects started, um, probably close to 30 or so project submissions and almost 200 registrants. Um, so, you know, pretty, pretty moderately sized event. Um, we, yeah, we typically see, you know, around this or, or more depending on who the sponsors are and um, what the prizes look like. Um, but yeah, so that's, you know, Gitcoin. Uh, hackathons at the surface and uh, I'm excited to kind of keep moving on this panel and dive into some of the solutions that that people built so I'll uh, hand it off back to you guys cool let me let me go ahead jump ahead and share my screen and talk to you guys a little bit about um, what I was building during this hackathon so there are actually two things I was building. Um, the first one, which we talked a little bit about, Democracy Earth, Polish Test and Deploy a Quadratic Voting DAO. And I'll quickly speak about this one as a preface. 
the idea was to get an Ethereum community to rank every DAO in the ecosystem. And a quick little side note, if you don't know what a DAO is, decentralized autonomous organization, it's basically this whole concept that you can provide governance on chain being like through a blockchain system, you can coordinate governance attempts to, you know, decide things, fund things, do things, whatever. So how do we now get the community to rank all of these DAOs that exist? Because there's quite a few that exist. Um, so that was, uh, that was super fun. And I'll, and, but before I get to that, because this involves deploying a quadratic voting DAO, I'll quickly tell you about the other video bouncing, which bounty, which was explaining quadratic voting and quadratic funding. And I'll quickly talk to you about it and then I'll play the video, but essentially quadratic voting allows people to express the relative strength of their preferences in a democratic process. And you can think of it as you have voice credits and it follows this function y is equal to root x. Um, if you spend nine voice credits, you'll only get three votes, so on and so forth. Um, uh, but anyways, let me jump straight into the video. Uh, I actually don't think I shared with my sound. I'm going to quickly stop sharing and reshare with my sound because uh, otherwise no one's going to hear anything. Okay, there we go. Share computer sound. And will you guys just let me know if it doesn't sound too hot or anything like that, but it should be good. Oh. Here we go. Can you guys see? Yep, we still do. Nice. Okay. Thanks. Here we go. This change is a global movement dedicated to reimagining the building blocks of democracy and markets in order to uphold fairness, amongst other things, in a rapidly changing world. So let's talk a bit about these building blocks. Boom, 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 boom. We're talking about quadratic building blocks today. Quadratic voting and quadratic finance. Now, quadratic, when you Google it, these images may come up and it may remind you a little bit of high school. But today, we're talking about hmm, quadratic voting, which is slightly different. It actually allows people to express the relative strength of their preferences in a democratic process. So we can imagine we have 50 proposals we have to vote on and we want to express our preference or the relative strength of our preference in this democratic process. How would we do that? Well, you can imagine we have this quadratic function y is equal to root x hence the name quadratic and in this case we'd be given a certain number of voice credits say a hundred voice credits with one voice credit being one vote four voice credits being two votes and you can see over here nine voice credits you guessed it being equal to three votes and so on so forth now this is so cool because we no longer would have 51 people who support a proposal but barely care about the issue outvote 49 incredibly passionate opponents, predictably making society worse in the process. Additionally, this method is on average the ideal way of allowing people to more and more impose their desires on the rest of society, but at an ever escalating cost. People are more likely to vote strongly, not only about issues they care more about, but issues they know more about, given they're able to express the relative strength of their preference using this quadratic voting process. Now, what is quadratic finance? Much along the same vein, it allows people to express the relative strength of their preferences and perhaps a funding process where you could imagine there was a multitude of grants they had to look at funding. Again, if you had $100 to give, we could look at this in a way where every dollar you give would be matched in a quadratic fashion. And there we have it in a nutshell, quadratic finance and quadratic voting, man. That is really cool. Yeah, yeah that was, was quite cringe Thank watching you. myself present, but <laughs> that was that video. Um, hope everyone enjoyed. So now hopefully you know a bit more about quadratic voting and we'll quickly go back to, um, oh, this Zoom thing is covering, there we go. Uh, we'll go back to the polish test and deploy the quadratic voting DAO. So I'll quickly talk through, I think the two main really interesting things. Remember, we're getting the Ethereum community to, to rank every DAO in the ecosystem. The first thing I'll say, and this is, this is just something that's really interesting. When you call a vote function, this is a, something I've seen a lot of people do. And since we've deployed a quadratic voting DAO in a different sense for wildcards, you actually don't want to calculate a square root on the chain because it's it's really expensive to do calculations and and things on the blockchain because that means every node in the network remember it's decentralized has to perform that same computation so whatever you can do off chain you sort of want to do off chain for efficiency 
So you'll note when you vote, instead of just passing in what you want to vote and us calculating the square root, one simple thing is you pass in the amount and the square root, which you've obviously calculated off chain. And then you have something called a modifier. And this basically checks when you call the function that the square root multiplied by the square root is actually equal to the amount and it's correct. So that's just something cool I thought I'd point out. Um, it makes it a lot more efficient. But um, essentially the system that we design, and as I said, it's open source. You can go um, onto this issue, you can view the submission. The, what we wanted to do was incentivize participation in this DAO and having the Ethereum community ranking every DAO in the ecosystem. So how we had a, a quick summary, um, someone would join the DAO with a certain level of finance um, and that would be DAI and we would lend that DAI out, which is a, so DAI quickly is a, a stable coin pegged to the US dollar, soft pegged to the US dollar. We would lend this out on a lending protocol, a decentralized lending protocol called Aave and this would generate interest over time and essentially the, the voting would happen over intervals and we imagine this would be quarterly um, per year in order to refresh and have some kind of vote decay so that the rankings remain fresh. But essentially we built the mechanism such that um, users who vote every quarter receive a payout and a collective percentage of all the interest generated from the DAO. So essentially you can actually earn money, uh, passive income, if you're an active participant in the democracy, as well as you know being incentivized to take part. So we thought that was really cool. And this mechanism also plays into financially preventing civil attacks in one point. And a quick note on civil attacks is one of the biggest issues in quadratic voting. Um, instead of just being one person and having 100 voice credits and casting those 100 voice credits and it only counting as 10 votes, I'll just create 10 identities and I'll put, um, or I'll create 100 identities and put one voice credit in each identity and that will count as one vote from each identity. And since blockchain, you know, it's so easy to spin up a public address, that's a really prominent attack. Um, so this also had to deal with that attack and it did that in one way through making it far more profitable to join as a single entity and in the incentivization interest mechanism I just talked about. You'll have to read more about that. We won't have time to go into it. And the second part through a minimum threshold joining such that it becomes costly to Cybal and it becomes ineffective in the stance of voting. But yeah, we, we won't have much more time to go into that, but that, it was super fun building that system the code is open source. Um, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Maybe one other quick thing. Um, the contracts are separated out into a non-upgradable part and an upgradable part. This makes sure that some features can be iterated on while others give guarantees that the user's funds can never be touched. Um, yeah, and I think that's a- John, John, one question on that yeah. one. Is, is it planned to like sign up members for this decentralized autonomous organization or to, to, you know, build a sort of community around this first quadratic voting DAO or, or yes. Is it yeah. Yeah. So, so democracy, this is funded by democracy earth and Santiago is the guy to speak to, but he plans on rolling this out and yeah, yeah. essentially it's planning to get people in. Um, there is one other quadratic voting DAO at least I know that exists out there. Um, me and my friends built it for wild cards. It's a conservation dial. So anyone Glenn who owns a wild card. Yeah, yeah, Glenn yeah, the Dragon. Yeah, right. so <laughs> you, can, you can actually quadratic vote for which animal conservation you want funds to go on a monthly basis. So used a lot of the same ideas there and transferred it here. Um, yeah, so I'm actually also part of the wild cards team, which is sponsoring some prizes, but also... I was doing some prizes because they were so cool and we'd done similar yeah. stuff. So, yeah. yeah. We, so we have got 20, 21 minutes left on the clock, but I, I think if you could take like, you could even take one, two minutes, like talking about the wildcard challenges, if you like, John, John, on the, yeah, yeah, that would, yeah. that would be great. Cause, so, cause I mean, you also participated with, with your team. So yeah, totally. Give me, give me two seconds. I'll share with you guys again and I'll show you, um, wild cards but um essentially wild cards wanted to do two things 
firstly, we list animals as non-fungible tokens, and these animals are always for sale, and they create funds through harbinger tax, another radical exchange mechanism. And when we get these animals from conservations or pictures and ideas of them, we need to create the artwork for those animals before we sort of put it on our platform. Mm -hmm. And you can see this animal hook over here is actually a community um, a community based artwork and we thought instead of us trying to create these artworks and outsource it to Fiverr or something let's create a portal where artists can come and if they want to contribute they can create an artwork for this animal and they can receive a percentage of every sale of that animal into perpetuity um, and support a great cause so the one challenge was around building that artwork portal for us and the other idea was wait, wait a second on the screen there's oh, there's Glenn the dragon upcoming for uh, yes there we go. that's, uh, that's uh, I mean, uh, in connection i guess to the radical exchange founder Glenn Weil, right yes yeah um, yeah exactly uh, so we we spoke a bit about average <laughs> attacks alongside glenn last year in zurich and ideas and this is just that's where we got the name glenn the dragon and this is our quadratic voting dial so you can use the loyalty tokens you get. If you hold the wild card, these are minted and given to you as appreciation, and you can use these to vote on which organization you want the funds to go to. Um, and then, yeah, the last, thank you, thank you. The, the last part, quickly, the last second bounty we had was, we've obviously spent a lot of time over the last few months creating smart contracts on Ethereum, so the code of the programmable money to allow these assets to always be for sale and how do you make sure it's scalable and not have security issues and xyz there's a whole lot of things you have to consider and essentially we said we've built these cool contracts now we want to see someone else bring the harbinger tax use case forward and build a cool harbinger tax application whatever they think is cool so here are the smart contracts go out and have fun and build something cool using harbinger tax on the blockchain so that was our second bounty where you yeah, also go check it out. There's some cool submissions. Um, nice. Yeah. Those are our two bounties. Thank you so much. Gentlemen. Thanks. It's crazy guys. that you worked on this from so many different angles on the good exchange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nestor, do you want to share your winning videos for the other two video challenges? Can you see my screen? Yes, yes. All right. So this okay, so uh, thank you, Leon, and thank you, John. Great uh, presentation. So basically, what I uh, did was participate in two bounties. Well, actually, I, I participated in the three in the three video bounties, but I I won in two of them. The first one is about yeah. video, uh, video data. And I really think that uh, basically in the two videos that I did, um, winners was uh, Data Dignity and Salsa. But I, my, my approach was to explain in a very, very easy way to, to, you know, to make people understand about this topic uh, and explain and make them aware about the importance of Data Dignity and this new concept of Salsa. Because usually, uh, you know, there is this barrier, uh, this mental barrier that when you try to explain uh, these kind of topics, there are like, you know, uh, this is just for, for geeks, this is just for nerds. Yeah. So what we, we wanted, what we wanted to do is to, you know, to explain in a context, in a uh, easy day by day context, and then uh, guide them, you know, to a a storytelling where they could understand in, a, in an easy way what is that activity about and what is salsa what is salsa proposing so uh, i'm gonna present the the video um and this is the first one this is about uh, data dignity uh, did you i think you have to enable your sound uh, Nestor. I think you need the sound video sharing. Yes. To that that we hear, you know. 
this this little tick box on the lower left when you yeah man yes you are swiping on your favorite social media after a delicious lunch at your work and you suddenly view a promotional ad about a product you just were looking some hours ago before leaving your apartment you think this is so cool exactly what i was looking for and with a promotional price such a deal well have you ever wondered what data is being collected for you to see this ad through which agreement and under which conditions let me talk to you about some concepts. Historically, the legal and economic framework of property rights came from land ownership. Then it was extended to copyrights, and it has spread to data. Just as an example, the prices companies around the world have about 80% of its assets under the category of intangible assets, and that's not by any means a coincidence. And a big part of this percentage is the intellectual property, software code, and most importantly, the data they manage. This is a new era of data economy. Now, let's go back to our example. Do you remember those questions? Currently, there's an answer to this called data ownership. But this is an incomplete proposal solution because if you think about it, a set of data for one user is useless. The power is in the collected information and there is no conceptual adoption to this need by big corporations. And this is where the importance of data dignity resides, because it's essentially the idea that data is a shared asset and that we need to work towards innovative modes of collective bargaining for the value of these resources to properly structure the data economy. Right, that's and the second one is about salsa. Nestor, do what you mind? To... Salsa is. Yeah. Uh, Nestor, do you mind yes. if I share it from my screen? Because I, I think your internet connection is not perfect right now. Okay. Then sure. it's just. Okay. And, but thank you. I will just open it up. Okay. Sure. Um, and yeah, so basically. I, I I really enjoy uh, been doing these videos, and actually I'm I'm still reading the book uh, of Radical Exchange. I think it has a, a about you know the the quadratic finance and quadratic funding. It's a really exciting topic because at least in the in the in my experience with uh, social activism, I think that this proposal can be very very you know like. Uh, it can change a lot of things you know, for funding, for, for social activism, um, and, and yeah. Right, Thank so you. now we are gonna see the next video. It's can I start it? Yeah. Sure. You're in heavy traffic looking for a parking slot, you can't find one and you start to think, this system doesn't work. That's an easy answer. But I invite you to dig into what could be done. There are two traditional approaches to allocate finite public assets among members of society. First come, first serve. On this approach, the arbitrary institution allocates the finite public assets to the first X amount of requesters. The other approach is the auction. The arbitrary institution auction the finite public asset and the winner are the top X requester with the highest bids. In both cases, X is defined by the institution and the quantity of the limited public assets existing at the time. But these two approaches have shortcomings in terms of efficiency and social equity. So what can we do? We propose SALSA. It stands for Self-Assessed License Sold via Auction. And it consists on allocate finite assets by selecting the highest bid of the auction in the first round. But for the next ones, the holder of these assets will pay a yearly fee to continue holding it. This fee is a percentage of each holder's own self-assessed value of the asset, but the twist is that if any potential new requester will pay more for the whole of that asset than the holder's declared self-assessment, the holder must sell it at this new, higher value unless he increases his own value. And the parking lot is just one of the many cases where you can use salsa.
Yeah, man, I, I really like this. Thank you so much for these submissions. And by the way, like Ernesto went the edge from just, Niall yes. and added like a logo animation if you saw it in the end, in the beginning. That was really nice. Yeah. And so maybe just a, as, a, as a promotion might also for, for Connor, I, I think this is a great, you know, a great proposal and actually uh, it will be proposed in, 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 you know, the next program about kernel that maybe Connor can, can mention a little bit more about it because many of us, I think we, we're going to apply for that opportunity. And thank you, Leo, awesome. for this opportunity. Yeah, thank you for participating us on these great explanations of the concepts. Thanks so much. So the next challenge is not about videos. It's about computer programs. Russell, do you want to talk a bit about the scope of what we gave the hackers, like the scope of a problem and, and show us what you built? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this challenge was all about um, these ideas, quadratic finance, quadratic voting, um, and, and even potentially other ideas like salsa. Um, and thanks for explaining those concepts. Those were like really awesome explanations. Um, but this challenge is really about applying it in the real world. Um, and so we're looking at how do you apply these concepts to things like a um, home, homeowner association. Um, so we actually built some software here um, thinking about how do we ap apply these ideas in the real world. Um, and so we have an application here that's really, um, I like this challenge because we don't have to worry too much about some of the ideas, you know, like civil attacks and identity and um, wallets and that sort of thing. Uh, it's a very practical application of like, how do we, how does this work um, in a smaller community where everybody knows each other? Um, you don't have to worry quite as much about, you know, <laughs> is this person a real person? But um, is let's say, for example, money? you have, what's that? Uh, is this even money? Just is this even joke? money? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so this is like a, a real world example of like, say you have a homeowner association or a condo board um, really frequently um, have these sorts of issues where they want to engage their community and they want to empower them to make decisions um, and they may want to encourage people to um, share their ideas about what is important to fund. Um, but most of the time right now, this is done through some pretty kludgy old software um, and sort of an ad hoc basis where you may engage the community now and now, now and then through an email or something like that. But there's no real way to um, encourage that sort of democratic participation. Um, and so I got really excited about this challenge for um, not necessarily like public goods funding in the sense of like, oh, let's um, fund a national army or something like that, um, but club goods, right? So what do me and my neighbors want to maybe invest in collectively? Or what decisions do we want to make as a group? Um, so the scope of this is really small and that, that lets us focus on really making sure that the user experience is good for um, you know, the average, the average person who's just trying to do this, do this stuff in the, in the community and they don't really have to understand the concepts as deeply to be able to take advantage of the, the benefits of them. Um, so this is an app I built called Co-Up. Um, we have a tagline like build your community with your community. Um, it's still very much a work in progress, but uh, we have a few different um, features here. Um, the idea is that when you are part of this community, you may be signed up for this application and have sort of a, a monthly amount of tickets that you get. Could be an arbitrary number. I'm, I'm setting myself up here with 200 tickets uh, a month and you can vote on topics with these. And so we have our topics page here. Um, you can see a bunch of different topics that the community is discussing. Um, there's different things that these organizations may want to um, discuss with their communities. So, you know, there's an election here. We're talking about who should we elect to the board of directors for our homeowner association. Um, 
another one here is a poll for like, how should we use our courtyard space um, where we want to represent different points of view? Um, what quiet hours should be imposed? This is a rule that we're considering adopting. Um, you know, what should we buy for the clubhouse? Another poll. Um, and what's on the agenda for Tuesday's board meeting, for example. Um, so each of these topics has sort of an end date for voting and an associated reward where um, participants get rewarded just for, you know, participating in that topic. And if I go inside here. Renzo, let me ask you one question. Would this reward convert to the tickets that we see in the upper right corner? Or That's right. So once okay. I voted, once I've participated in this topic, um, so the reward here is, it should say five tickets. Um, gotcha. Once the voting period is done, those tickets will just pop into my sort of monthly allotment so that just by participating, I'm, I'm sort of like, um, I'm not necessarily, um, I, I'm, I'm able to like save up for the things that I really care about. Um, gotcha. Yeah, and so it's up to the facilitator to sort of balance um, the mechanics a little bit here. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's quite flexible for like a number of different use cases. So in this case, we have an agenda that we're voting on. Um, this is, it could be a homeowner association. Um, in tech, this is a very common process where we do like a lean coffee to discuss the uh, agenda items, um, that sort of meeting format. And it allows us yeah. to give participants ownership of the agenda. Um, so in this case, we have a like sort of fake uh, board meeting and we're trying to set the agenda ahead of time. Um, and so we have a bunch of proposals for what should be on the agenda. Um, and we have five days to vote for it. Um, and I'll get five tickets for just voting on this um, or proposing topics. Um, so we have, you know, elevator guidelines during COVID-19. Um, some people may find that important. Um, how can our community support Black Lives Matter? Um, this may be voted by some people. And then we also have to talk about green bin guidelines for some reason. <laughs> um, and then we have the option down here to propose um, like another proposal for this agenda. And that would be open to anyone to participate in. Um, and the influence, like the, the design of this is made to be quite intuitive. We have a voting button here, um, just functions like a normal button uh, with a sort of nice little micro interaction that tells you how much, how many tickets you're gonna be spending when you vote. Um, so the first time I click here, we'll see the ticket jump into that little ballot box. Uh, and then we can see up here that the number of tickets, the next time I vote is gonna be um, two tickets. And so um, the hope here is that like, you don't have to understand quadratic voting to be able to understand sort of that you're, get, you're gonna be charged more as you vote more. Um, yeah. And we can, you know, there's still some further refinements to this, uh, but you can still sort of get that nitty gritty detail if you want to click on this uh, number of votes and, and adjust it. Um, so this is inspired actually by um, incremental games where um, sort of an existing concept from, um, from video games where um, there's a lot of like UX research already done about how do we show people multiple currencies and how do we encourage people to think strategically about what they want to invest in. Um, so we're getting some um, UX ideas from, from there. Yeah, um, I think that's really important, especially for quadratic voting. Like oftentimes when I pitch sort of the concept to like friends and family, the response I get is like, do you really think like everybody will be able to understand this like quadratic formula and that like spending more credits puts a higher cost like on the next vote and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I always, I always say with interfaces like these, like with good software that really visualizes in a simple, playful manner, it, it works, so. <laughs> yeah, totally. I think this is like such a ripe area for experimentation um, because it, it, you know, it's quite a mathy concept, but um, it doesn't have to be. And if you look at like a typical video game that someone spends like 10 hours a day on, they're yeah. actually doing much more complicated interactions than this, right? It's not, yeah, it's yeah. not rocket science. Um, so yeah, so if, you know, the second time I'll see it's going to cost me two. Um, and then I'll click to vote again. Oop, there's a little bug. Um, 
and it'll start costing me more each time. Awesome. Um, yeah, so that's the idea there. I can um, propose a new option down here. Or if I go back, I can sort of create a new topic. Um, I won't go doing, I won't go through the whole thing, but you can sort of choose the type of topic, whether it's an election or a new rule, uh, a new agenda that you want to work on. Um, you can sort of set the participation reward as a facilitator um, to encourage people to get in. And you can set the end date as well. Um, so it's, again, it's, it's sort of a flexible way of just um, involving the community. Um, the other section here is not totally finished, but the idea would be as a community, you can also choose what you want to fund. And this goes back to the quadratic funding idea um, that Nestor explained really well as well. Um, you can see here we have a list of community funds, um, a reward for participating, um, a goal amount, and you can see how much people have contributed and how much is coming out of that community fund um, based on the, the number of people who have contributed. So um, I won't go too into depth with this because it's still very much a work in progress, but the idea here would be to incentivize people to find um, things that they have in common that they want to fund um, and encourage them to you know, do more than they would otherwise. Would you um, imagine, sorry, yeah. Would you imagine this to be like actually settling payments, like either on on like bank based systems or crypto yeah. systems, or would it rather be like just like writing up the information, like how mm -hmm. much is somebody going to pay, and then you take the payment sort of of the application? I mean, it would work probably with small communities, but yeah, it's a great question, and I think you could go both ways. I think the killer feature for this, if you really want to just like knock all of the other homeowner, homeowner association software, like out of the park would be to just integrate something like Stripe with this yeah. uh, and just like seamlessly collect payments um, and then pay them out. It's like quite, quite easily doable with Stripe. Um, so you could do that and it would be, you know, just like using any other sort of e-commerce website um, yeah. and then the sort of community management wouldn't have to take that on. Um, so, but again, we're talking about like a small community, so you could probably go either way. I got you. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then on the right hand side here, you could probably have some statistics around like how many um, tickets you've earned this month and other statistics around that. Um, one other sort of last idea, this isn't built yet, but going back to the idea of a salsa uh, self assessed license, um, you could also have sort of a shared amenities section here where, you know, say I want to rent out the, the party room or the pool mm. table. Um, I like that. That, that idea that the Nestor was just showing us and be able to say, well, you know, I, I really want to use the pool table on this day. <laughs> and so I'm going to rent it out unless someone wants to pay more. <laughs> and we can yeah. start funding our community that way as well. Yeah, yeah that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's like a sort of quick overview of the topics. Any other questions about it? I, I don't have Very a cool. I just, yeah, I just want to say this is awesome. Like, I love how um, user friendly it is because I think the biggest barrier for a lot of these things and, you know, adoption is that it's so confusing. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, these, these radical mechanisms, you know, on the surface are still kind of confusing to understand. But then when you tie in like tokens and blockchains and, you know, wallets, it gets extremely, <laughs> extremely confusing. And so this just really simplifies it um, to the point where I'd be comfortable, you know, letting my parents use it. That's great. Yeah, that's, that's the ultimate goal. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Russell. I, I hope we can like further develop this and get it to like common associations or housing co-ops or yeah. even like shared apartments, I guess, could use it. <laughs> yeah, it, like, you know, th there's other, you know, speaking of sort of like the co-ops and, and that sort of thing, like the concepts are flexible enough to be applied to a wide range of organizations. It could also be yeah. unions. It could be student student unions, co-ops. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Thing as well. Awesome. Thanks a lot. So, yeah, thank you all.